In 2022, we celebrate 130 years of HBCU football. On December 27, 1892, Livingstone and Biddle College, now known as Johnson C. Smith University, played in Salisbury, North Carolina, with Biddle winning 5-0. Over time, HBCU football has evolved. HBCU football's popularity continues to rise. Millions attend games each year and millions more watch on television. The HBCU bands provide some of the top entertainment in the country. Over that time, some of the best players to ever play in the National Football League played at HBCUs. Every Monday through Friday on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast, national radio and television host Donald Ware takes a look at what's happening in HBCU football and talks with coaches, players, administrators, and media about the 2022 season. Make sure you join the conversation on social media by using the hashtag HBCU130. Now, here's your host, Donald Ware. You've got it locked to the HBCU Football Daily Podcast for today, Tuesday, August the 23rd. I'm Donald Ware. Hope you've been enjoying these podcasts. I'm going to tell you what, we're we're now four days away, four days away from the start of the HBCU uh, football season. And as I keep saying, it promises to be exciting. And specifically, right, the MEAC promises to be exciting this year. Joining us, as you can see right here, those that are listening, we're joined by the second-year head football coach at Norfolk State, Dawson Odoms, no stranger to this program, no stranger to HBCU football, uh, as he joins us here on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast. What's going on, Coach Odoms? No, everything's going well. Just thank you, first of all, for having me you know, on your show. And it's always great to promote our great program and the people that make it up. So it's always good to be able to talk about what's good going on with Norfolk State as it relates to football. And I'm so grateful that you offered me the opportunity to come on and uh, talk about our program. Absolutely. Anytime you've always been gracious with your time. So we appreciate you. So what is good? Camp's good, right? Tell me, camp, camp is good so far. Camp is going good. Uh, some guys are stepping up and we're going to need some guys to continue to step up before we reach that season will open on September the 3rd. I think we're we're gaining on it. Uh, we're a lot further along than we were a year ago. Uh, we have more players in camp than we had a year ago. And we have a mixture of an older group of guys that's hungry with a younger group of guys that we're trying to put that puzzle together and just finding the roles out for guys and just making sure that we do everything that we can to put a good product out there. Any – what are, are, are there differences, right? Because you come in – I think it was March of – what was it? No, February. Is what, what it was. February uh, of of twenty one. Um, so you know, you 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 come in. You got about you know what four or five months to prepare for a, a season. And you guys were, were pretty solid last year. We'll talk more about that. But I mean, what are the differences in terms of the preparation coming to camp this year opposed to last year? Well, you know, we didn't get in to the end of April uh, yeah. a year ago, and that's the biggest thing. Is just I think that you're elapsed has allowed you a chance to build relationships. I really think it's about building relationships, getting to know the players, players getting to know coaches, getting to know their parents, uh, learning the university. I think that first year, you, it's all about learning. And if you allow room for yourself to learn and grow, you have an opportunity in front of you to really grasp everything and take the bull by the horns as you begin to go into year two. And I really think those relationships with our players have been, you know, they've been phenomenal as we moved into – spring ball and move through the summer and now we're in fall camp just to see more guys smiling more guys comfortable with us and more guys comfortable what we're doing is giving us an opportunity to really get a football program going in the right direction your thoughts on on last year's six and five record and uh you you were right there you know right there at the end in terms of that MEAC race well we started out one and two and we won six games in a row and I try to tell people all the time that when a group of guys have not had the opportunity to win, is can you handle winning? Everybody says, you know, you want to win, but it stays as in winning. I think when you're a program that haven't won, you got to first try to figure out how to win. And then you're going to have some devastating defeats that says, now how do we sustain winning? And that's what this whole program is all about, trusting the process and believing because we understand there's going to be some peaks and valleys, 
Uh, we thought we had a football team in position the last three games. We did not finish, but we didn't have a football team that we could talk about finishing. We didn't have a football team that we had an off season to be able to talk about the nuances of the process to be able to get them mentally locked in to where they need to be in order to be successful in November. So I think guys that are coming back that remember those losses in November have a greater opportunity to be great leaders going forward and talk about our program and what they want to leave and what kind of legacy they want to leave behind. So I think we learned a lot from a year ago, six and five. Uh, I, I wish it could have been better, but I think it's the hand that was dealt. Uh, we finished right where we were supposed to finish. We achieved right where we were supposed to achieve. But it was a learning experience. It wasn't a failure. It wasn't a success. It's an opportunity for us to learn and grow. Your thoughts uh, on me, I play. I mean, you were the head coach at Southern for 10 years there in the SWAC, had some success, a lot of success. I actually won a SWAC uh, championship there, also in contention basically every year. Your thoughts on uh, being in the MEAC? I, I think your time at when you were, you know, you, you've been in the MEAC before, but your thoughts being back in the MEAC, but this time around as a head coach? Well, it, it was different. It was different when I was in the MEAC. Uh, I had a chance to coach under Alvin Wild, who I think is one of the, the the greatest defensive minds that I've had a chance to be around. He did a great job with that program at Bethune Cookman. And just being there with him, we was able to do a, a lot of great things with the young men that we had, and that was in the MEAC. And one thing I know, if you want to be successful in the MEAC, you got to play defense. If you go win this conference, you got to be lights out on defense. And it's, it's always been like that. And usually the teams that win it are up there ranked one and two in defense in all categories. So we try to do some things and get our philosophy taught and, and want to play much better defense. Uh, we think we got an offensive scheme that's going to allow us to score some points. But the coaches, the coaches are fundamentally sound. Uh, they do an outstanding job in the MEAC. Uh, it's competitive every game. Uh, it's going to be a lot of games decided by 10 or less points and usually go come down to the last drive of the game. And as a fan, you know, that's atmosphere. That's exciting atmosphere that you would like to be in because those are electric football games. And I really think that me at schedule is challenging. And you got to be able to play with a lot of energy and enthusiasm for 60 minutes because we got some great coaches and great players in this conference. Dawson Odoms, the head football coach at Norfolk State in his second season. He joins us here on the HBCU Football <laughs> Daily Podcast. How do you go about I mean, you can never replace a guy like a Jawan Carter. I mean, had a phenomenal career at uh, Norfolk State, had a good season for you uh, last year. But uh, do, you, do you have a quarterback battle? Have you named a quarterback? Who's your starter? How do, how do you go about now in that position when you've had a guy like a Jawan Carter? Well, I think when you have really good quarterbacks, and I, I've been blessed, uh, I think you, you never replace them, but their departure creates an opportunity for somebody else to step in and write their legacy. And I really think it's all about what you're recruiting, the kind of young man you want to be in that position and, and making sure they have the right leadership characteristics because, again, they're the face of the program. And we really believe we have some guys that are competing for this job. We probably won't name a starter to probably game week, if not right at the kickoff. So it's a great battle taking place, and we got some guys that are really fighting for that job. And we're just going to keep chopping wood and carrying water until we can figure out that who that guy is and we're going to follow the process until then. Who, who are those guys that are battling and what do they bring to the table? Uh, we got about four guys that are battling. You know, everybody want to know their names, but, you know, we have yet to release their names. So, All right. So it's, it's get your tickets. Uh, I think we got some guys in the mix that are going to be excited. And, you know, because no matter how, no matter the order I say the names, that's, Everybody going to proceed. That's the order. So I always say we got four, and I'll leave it at that. Your running back, J.J. Davis, boy, he's so versatile. He's been named the MEAC's preseason player of the year. You know, as a young man uh, for you that rose, uh, rushed for close to 900 yards, 7.2 yards per carry. He also rushed for 10 touchdowns. Very versatile, caught uh, double digits in terms of receptions. Speak to him and, you know, what he's going to provide to the offense this year. Well, I think he is one of the more talented running backs. I think he's a definitely a dual threat guy, uh, really a triple threat because he can block, he can run, and he can catch. So he's going to really be a focal point on our offense. I think we're going to try to find ways to to get this young man to football and do some things with his talent. I think he's humble. I think he has unbelievable balance, speed, and he, his durability has been there. 
So I'm looking for an, another big year from him. And as he continues to grow, we're running a new offense and he's picked up on it very well. And if that offensive line can, can begin to come together and really open up some holes, we're looking for him to have another exciting year. Yeah, speak to that offensive line. I mean, that's something you've always been big on. You've had really good offensive lines uh, in your tenure as a head coach. Who are some of the guys we need to look for off uh, from the offensive line and how well do you feel like that unit is gelling so far in camp? Well, Kobe Bird is the main name. It starts from him. He's the center. He runs that position. He makes all the calls for us, gets us going in the right direction. And with his leadership, he's a senior that's done an outstanding job for this football program. We're excited for him as he entered his senior year. I think he's going to do an outstanding job moving this offense forward. And we need him to be at his best. And I think he's ready to be the leader that we called him to be. And I think he's ready for an exciting senior year. And we're looking forward to outstanding things from him. Yeah, he's a he's a preseason first team um, all conference guy um, defensively. H- how do you feel the defense did, you know, last year and, you know, talk. Is it a, is it the same scheme, new scheme? What what may be different about the defense this year? No, no difference. We're still four two five. Uh, we're going to do some things uh, from a fundamental standpoint. They help our guys continue to improve uh, Marquise Hall. You know, these guys that are returning for their second year are so much more comfortable in the defense. Yeah, I realize when you get here in April, at the end of April, 1st of May, and you don't get these kids till July, and you're talking about implementing a a scheme for a fall, and you haven't had a whole lot of time with these guys, but yet you were able to put yourself in the positions to be in the hunt for a championship. So I think everybody can be optimistic about what we have coming back with the continuity of our staff and just doing the things that we know we can do better and got talent coming back. Uh, we really think we could be a really good football team that's destined to become a great football team. Entire staff coming back? No, we had some coaching changes. We lost a couple of guys and uh, lost Coach Jones. Uh, he went on to the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Uh, uh, B.T. Sherman, he's now at Morgan and and Coach Tory, uh, he's up at Howard. So we 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 lost some guys, and you know, wish those guys well on their career. Uh, but we plugged in some holes and uh, replaced some guys, and and try to create an opportunity for somebody else to to put their stamp on the program. And if those guys can come in and continue to coach with the great motivation that our program uh, desires, and be great teachers, then we think we got a chance to really be successful in twenty twenty two. Dawson Odoms, the head football coach at Norfolk State, joins us here on the program, especially on that back end of the defense. <laughs> Speak to what a Brandon Savage means to the defense and specifically on that back end. Well, just a lot of a lot of experience. I think these guys have played a lot of football, including Savage. I think he's one of the returning starters at the corner position for us. And then Justin Toll is on the other side, who I think pound for pound, maybe the strongest guy on our football team and one of the toughest competitors in that locker room. Uh, they just give you experience, and I just think that's something you got to have to be successful. Twelve years now as a head coach, how are you? You know how how have you grown? I, I remember, I, I think it was I think it was 2012. Southern was 0 and 2. Stump Mitchell got replaced. You came in. You guys really did well that year, and then the next year you ended up winning the SWAC championship. But but how? You know what's the difference in Dawson Odens between? 2012 when he took over early in that season to the Dawson Odoms coming in to the 2022 season? I don't think it's a lot of differences. I think we have the same approach to our process. We have the same understanding and belief in what has created success before. Uh, Once you master it, it would duplicate success for you again. And that's what we hang our hat on. Uh, We chop wood and carry water and we follow the process that's in place. And we always tell my players to trust the process, uh, obey all the way, do what's right. Simple things lead to big things, small things add up. So it's a constant culture change that I think is where a program begins to turn the corner and, and starts becoming a winner in the contender year in and year out. We're trying to establish a program here at Norfolk State. Uh, we had a winning season last year. That's that's good, but that's something we want to build on. We want to be able to compete for that championship. And we think we got a good enough football team 
if the ball bounces our way a couple of times this year, we feel like we're going to be in position, uh, hopefully in November, to say that, you know, we're in the race. And really, that's what our process is all about, is getting to November with a chance. And then we know that our mental makeup will bring us through. We didn't have a chance to work on that mental makeup a year ago, but these guys had a great all season. Uh, we don't went through a lot of speakers going fall camp, just focusing on our mental makeup. And I really think that's going to be the side and factor once we get into November. Last thought, a couple of early tests for you open on the road against Marshall and then on the road the next week against uh, James Madison. Some good early tests for you, for your football team. Well, we're going to find out a lot you know, about our football team right out of the bat. You know, once we get out, get out of the gate, we're going to have an opportunity to see, you know, two FBS programs, Marshall, uh, who has a good football team, uh, scored some points a year ago. Uh, they're, as advertised, has one of the better running backs in the country and got a couple transfers. So we don't really know what their football team will look like. So game one, we know it's going to be challenging. It's going to come down to, you know, what I always say, it's going to come down to three things, uh, penalties, uh, turnovers, and effort. If you can be in those, if you can win those three categories, you got a chance against anybody. But we know it's going to be a good football team, and we're going to have to get our mind uh where it needs to be in order to be successful. So we're looking forward to the challenge. JMU is, is taking the step up to FBS. Very good football program at the FCS level, one of the top contenders over the last 10 years. And, you know, they've done a great job with their program. It's an in-state football game. Quite sure there'll be a lot of people there to watch it. And, you know, it's, it's a challenge for our guys. And I think that's why you come to Norfolk State is that we're going to give you a platform to be able to showcase your talent. You want to be seen, you can be seen at Norfolk State. You want to get to the next level, you can get to the next level from Norfolk State. But we're going to give you a platform to showcase your talent. I always say, why not Norfolk State? Dawson Odoms, the second year head football coach at Norfolk State, joining us here on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast. As mentioned, the Spartans open the season on the road Saturday, September 3rd at Marshall. Coach Odoms, appreciate the time. Good luck to you and the Spartans this season. Always a pleasure. Behold the green and go. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the HBCU Football Daily Podcast. You can also listen to the podcast at BoxToRow.com, iHeartMedia, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to get your HBCU football fix on Box to Row with Donald Ware each weekend on the radio station near you and on Sirius XM on HBCU Channel 142 and on ESPNU Radio on Sirius XM Channel 84. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at at Box to Row for the latest in HBCU football and don't forget to tell a friend.